Pro Group Management. Workers' comp that works for you. This is 7 at 7 from the Las Vegas Review-Journal. Good evening, I'm Jen Ah. Thanks for joining us on 7 at 7. Breaking in sports, sponsored by DNR House of Diamonds, making luxury affordable located in downtown Summerlin. UNLV fires football coach Marcus Arroyo after three seasons. The athletic director calling it a tough decision. Review Journal's Cassie Soto has the latest. Despite winning the battle for the Fremont Cannon and a 5-7 and seven record, UNLV has fired head football coach Marcus Arroyo after three seasons. Arroyo signed a five-year contract before the 2020 season and has agreed to a $2.3 million buyout for the remaining two years of the contract. He finishes his UNLV career with a 7-23 and 23 record. Uh, and this year we had success at the beginning of the season, but then we, we stalled out for <clears throat> six weeks. Uh, and had a very struggling game the other night against UNR. But uh, you know, just that full body of work uh, does not see the trajectory of the program moving uh, to where we wanted to go, and that's winning championships. Should the Rebels make it to a bowl game, associate head coach and linebackers coach Kenwick Thompson will serve as the team's interim head coach. In more top stories, sponsored by Nevada Hand Silver Sky Assisted Living Community. Learn more at nevadahand.org. A man is sentenced to five years in prison in order to pay more than $2.5 million in restitution to the U.S. Small Business Administration. 40-year-old Jorge Abramovs reportedly participated in a scheme to defraud the government out of millions in federal loans and COVID relief funds during the pandemic, then spent the money on luxury condos, a Bentley, and a Tesla. Plus, multiple Southern Nevada locations will get wrong-way driver detection systems installed after they prove successful. Airview Journal's Renee Semmerauer has more on the initiative. Yes, the Nevada Department of Transportation Board of Directors earlier this month approved a $1.2 million contract to install the detection systems at three Las Vegas Valley locations and upgrade a fourth. Carson City also will see wrong-way detection systems installed. The system will utilize radar and cameras to detect wrong-way drivers and red flashing beacons to alert them they're headed the wrong direction. During a two-year wrong-way driving countermeasure study from June 18, 2020 through June 30, 2022, the system led 147 of 189 wrong-way drivers to turn around. Governor Steve Sisolak tweeted, With the new wrong-way driver detection systems, Nevada will be on the leading edge of combating these dangerous and severe crashes. He also said the detection system will be installed on select freeway ramps on the I-15 and U.S. 95 in Vegas and I-580 in Carson City. Wrong-way driver crashes lead to around 500 deaths annually nationwide, according to AAA. In Nevada, there are an average of five to six deaths caused by wrong-way drivers each year. And for more than a decade, Robert Tellis attempted to climb the social and political ladders in Las Vegas. And as the Review Journal's investigations team found out, complaints started while he was a student at UNLV. People who knew him say he used his authority to terrorize, control, and prey on women since at least 2012. James Schaefer has more. The RJ interviewed 18 colleagues and classmates of TELUS, the former Clark County Public Administrator who was charged with the murder of RJ investigative reporter Jeff Gehrman. TELUS's toxic behavior never raised alarms at the institutions that could have held him accountable. Jeff Gehrman left kind of a blueprint of what he was working on. RJ investigative reporter Brianna Erickson. When he was a law school student, students said they had seen a instance where he inappropriately touched a woman at a party. The pattern kind of continued. There were women who said that he had touched them inappropriately, uh, that he had grabbed their behinds, uh, <clears throat> that he had made inappropriate comments about being in a relationship with one of his former paralegals. More on this investigation and Jeff Gehrman's reporting about problems at the public administrator's office are available at reviewjournal.com backslash investigations. For the Las Vegas Review Journal, I'm James Sheever. In business, sponsored by Bank of Nevada, Bank on Accountability, one of the busiest domestic air carriers at Harry Reid International Airport, Frontier Airlines, ends live phone customer service. In other words, there are no more live agents available over the phone. Customers are being steered to digital support options. 
Frontier says customers who need help can contact them through social media and the WhatsApp messaging service. The airline says if live agent support is needed, we have live chat available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. And weather sponsored by Star Nursery, your garden's partner for every blooming thing. Get ready for another clear and cool night in the 50s. The temps sent to sink into the 40s in a few hours. And for the rest of your work week, we're looking at similar temps. On Tuesday, a high of 58 and low of 34 degrees with sunny skies and some light breezes. Almost identical conditions on Wednesday. On Thursday and Friday, your highs inch up to the 60s with some clouds and wind speeds getting into the double digits. In Health, sponsored by Boulder City Hospital. We're here for you when you need us. A Las Vegas woman who was the caretaker for her mother with Parkinson's says the Ruvo Center saved my life twice. In June, the Ruvo Center was named a Parkinson's Foundation Center of Excellence. The idea is that at a center of excellence, a patient has the best chance of getting a very accurate diagnosis and state-of-the-art treatment. The Parkinson's Foundation Center of Excellence Network is made up of 51 leading medical centers around the world, with 37 in the U.S. The Ruvo Center is the only facility in Nevada with that designation. Vegas Nation, sponsored by Station Casinos, STN Sports. Download the app today. For the second straight week, the Raiders earned a walk-off overtime victory, this time in Seattle against the Seahawks, and are now 2-6 and six in one-score games. On Monday, Coach Josh McDaniels talked about the team learning how to win. I think we learned something in Denver uh, about the way we needed to play under pressure, um, you know, and performing that we could do it, you know, and sometimes uh, you need a few of those things to happen to just give you the confidence to go back and repeat that same type of success somewhere else. And Sports betting, sponsored by Las Vegas Paiute Tribal Smoke and Cigar Shop. A Caesar Sportsbook better at the Atlantis in Reno wagered $901,000 to win $693,000 on USC on the money line over Utah in the Pac-12 Conference Championship game Friday at Allegiant Stadium. The Trojans are three-point favorites over the Utes and have climbed from minus 130 to minus 150 on the money line. The wager is the largest football bet placed at Caesars this season, college or pro. In entertainment, a New York lawmaker weighs in on the Ticketmaster Taylor Swift saga. Ticketmaster apologized to Swifties on its site, explaining the era's tour tickets did not go on public sale due to 14 million plus requests during the fan pre-sale period. Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez says she wants the 2010 Live Nation and Ticketmaster merger, quote, unwound. Over in southwest Las Vegas, if you're craving Cuban sandwiches, you're in luck. A small neighborhood grocery store called Mercadito will be marking its grand opening Thursday at the Uncommons Mixed Use Development. The market will offer hot press sandwiches, empanadas, and pastries. Thank you for watching 7 at 7. If you have a Roku device, just search Review Journal to download our channel. Watch Las Vegas breaking news streaming live on your OTT device. We'll see you tomorrow for more 7 at 7. Review Journal Studio, sponsored by Adam Kuttner. Get the maximum settlement as quickly as possible. This 7 at 7 update, sponsored by Pro Group Management. You're watching 7 at 7 from the Las Vegas Review Journal.